Today on Newswatch, dozens are dead after an explosion in a Chinese warehouse. Hear what led to the blast and what officials know so far. Plus, the latest undercover Planned Parenthood video is out. See what it reveals about the nation's largest abortion provider. And fasting. It's a spiritual practice for many, but doctors say it can have benefits for your immune system as well. We'll break down the research. And thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. The death toll continues to climb in the massive explosions that rocked China Wednesday. More than 40 people have been killed in the warehouse blast, including a dozen firefighters. Here in the Chinese port city of Tianjin, the damage from Wednesday night's massive warehouse explosions is clearer in the daylight. Dozens are dead, more than 500 injured, and some people are still missing. Take a look at the powerful blast rocking the city, blowing out the windows of high-rise apartments and destroying office buildings. I was sleeping and got woken up by a massive explosion. I could just feel my whole building shake. I thought it was an earthquake. Um, so I just kind of woke up in a panic, looked out the window, and the sky was red. The National Earthquake Bureau reported two major blasts before midnight, the first with the equivalent of three tons of TNT, and the second, the equivalent of 21 tons. The explosions took place in a mostly industrial economic development zone. Government officials and state media say the warehouse stored dangerous materials. More than a thousand firefighters responded. I was in the city just a couple of hours before the explosions took place. Um, and I um, would like to um, congratulate the prompt response of the authorities in seeking to minimize the loss of life. At least a half dozen logistics companies were destroyed in the blast and more than a thousand new cars were burned in a nearby car park. A truck bomb killed 54 people in a Baghdad market this morning. The Islamic State is claiming responsibility. It happened in the mostly Shiite neighborhood known as Sadr City. Islamic State terrorists commonly target such areas to warn the Shiite-dominated government. The Sunni militant group controls about one-third of Iraq, and it appears ISIS has beheaded another foreign hostage. A graphic photo reportedly shows a 30-year-old Croatian hostage who'd been kidnapped in Egypt. A caption says he was killed because Croatia is helping fight the war against ISIS. Family and friends gathered at a church to pray for the victim and his family. Croatia's president is asking people not to circulate the grisly photograph so people can remember the victim as a husband and a father. While most world leaders fret over bombs and stockpiles in the Iranian nuclear deal, some Europeans are focused on lining their pockets. As CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, the lifting of Iranian sanctions could mean millions. One sign resulting from the controversial nuclear deal with Iran could read, open for business. That's why the German economics minister and French foreign minister ran to the front of the line to visit Tehran. Economic uh, factors will be dominant, while the other aspects of the deal, which is Iran compliance, will be uh, pushed aside, I'm afraid. Reports say European businesses are ready to compete for their share of the 77 million strong Iranian market. Sanctions relief in the deal would pour between 50 to 150 billion dollars into the Iranian economy, enabling Iran to become better at what it already does well, export terrorism. It's a huge amount of money that will help them to recover their economy, to keep the regime in power and to use that money in order to uh, finance all of those terrorist organizations in the, in the region. There will be in, enough money for Iran to export the revolution to Syria, to help Hezbollah, to send uh, missiles and the know-how, how to build missiles, rockets to Hamas. President Obama even admitted that the terrorists would benefit from sanctions relief, but said it was worth the trade-off for Iran not to get a nuclear bomb. 
let's stipulate that some of that money will flow to activities that we object to. Iran supports terrorist organizations, Obama said, and even groups that have killed American troops. The truth is that Iran has always found a way to fund these efforts. And whatever benefit Iran may claim from sanctions relief pales in comparison to the danger it could pose with a nuclear weapon. Within eight years, people like Qassem Soleimani, commander of the Quds Force that supports terror proxies throughout the Middle East, will be off some lists. Israeli Interior Minister Sylvain Shalom told CBN News it doesn't make sense. It looks uh, an absurd that a terrorist like uh, Soleimani that is running all of the terrorist uh, terrorist, uh, operations here in our region will be out of uh, that list and will be a free man. And the Israelis are uh, brought uh, to the International Court in The Hague. In fact, Western intelligence agency said he already broke travel sanctions when he visited Moscow and met with Russian leaders last month. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Michael Seagal says dangerous people will be taken off the sanctions list. There is a guy, most of people probably didn't hear about him. His name is Faridun Abbasid Davani. He was uh, the head of the Iranian uh, Atomic Energy Association, one of the most skillful scient- nuclear scientists. And people like him will be, mo- will be moved out from the uh, uh, sanction list. Iranian leader Ayatollah Khomeini may soon press his advantage. According to a New York Post report, he recently released a 416-page book called Palestine, in which he lays out a plan to destroy Israel. As Congress debates the nuclear deal and the friction continues between the U.S. and Israel, it's clear the mullahs will see them as one, the great and little Satan, and they still call for death to both. Chris Mitchell, CBN News. And you can log on to CBN.com for more stories and information on the Iranian nuclear deal. A shocking new video from the Center for Medical Progress, this one suggesting Planned Parenthood harvest baby body parts without the mother's consent. Meanwhile, the Planned Parenthood debate is having an impact on the GOP race for the White House. Caitlin Burke reports. Serious allegations against Planned Parenthood with the release of a new video from the Center for Medical Progress. If there was a higher gestation and the technicians needed it, there are times where they would just take what they wanted. And these mothers don't know. And there's no way they would know. Federal law requires that a patient consent first to an abortion and then separately to donate their baby's tissue. According to this whistleblower whose company worked with Planned Parenthood, the abortion provider doesn't interpret it that way. So basically you just went in there and took her blood and you're going to be taking her fetus without her knowing. So yeah, I'm not, it's, it's just, that's terrifying. Like imagine if you were an abortion patient and someone was going in and stealing your baby's parts. Another shocking revelation, patients simply seeking a pregnancy test at Planned Parenthood were considered part of the supply as well. Pregnancy tests are potential pregnancies, therefore potential specimens. So it's just taking, taking advantage of the opportunities. Despite the recent videos exposing Planned Parenthood, Republican presidential hopeful Donald Trump recently defended the company, saying they do many good things for women's health. Penny Nance of Concerned Women for America told CBN News that Trump's just buying into the story Planned Parenthood is selling. Donald Trump is completely wrong. We must zero fund Planned Parenthood. Senator Joni Ernst had a brilliant bill that would shift that funding, all that money, over to community health centers that actually do help women around the country. There's 9,000 of them around the nation that care for the whole woman and don't do one abortion. Carly Fiorina also blasted Trump saying his talking points come straight from the Democratic Party. Fiorina recently spoke with CBN's David Brody, saying the Democrats' true platform needs to be exposed to the American public. People don't understand that the Democrats' platform is it's not a life until it leaves the hospital. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that Hillary Clinton has lobbied over and over against parental notification. Honestly, the Democrats believe that it's okay for a 13-year-old girl to have an abortion without a parent's permission, but she can't go to a tanning salon, she can't go get a tattoo. 
The debate to defund Planned Parenthood is expected to continue when lawmakers return next month. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. A Kentucky clerk will not issue same-sex marriage licenses even though a federal judge is now ordering her to do so. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis stopped issuing all marriage licenses after the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage. But a federal judge ruled this week ordering her to issue same-sex marriage licenses as well as all others. Davis's attorney says she doesn't intend to issue any licenses until all of her appeals are exhausted. This week, the U.S. Embassy in Havana raises the American flag for the first time in more than 50 years. The move signals a new era in the U.S.-Cuban relationship. Heather Sells traveled to the island nation and found some mixed reactions to this change between the two countries. For most Cubans, the new friendship with the U.S. doesn't mean much unless it puts food on their table or money in their pocket. The average government salary here is $20 a month, and even most professionals typically make less than 50. Each day, sitting down to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Cuba is a challenge. For many Cubans here, improved relations with the U.S. is good news. They are hoping for more openness, more opportunities, and ultimately, a better life. The embassy isn't the only place showing off the red, white, and blue here. Although the Cuban government has demonized the U.S. for some 50 years, you'll now find young people consuming American culture via smartphones and even their clothes. I use the American flag because the Americans respect Cubans just like we respect Americans. But along with economic hope comes political concern. New waves of repression this summer include 100 political arrests just last weekend. Many conservatives believe the U.S. lost any political leverage by not negotiating with Cuba from a position of strength. We've essentially now condoned the longest running military dictatorship in the entire Western Hemisphere. The Cuban government knows that there's nobody, that nobody's going to hold them accountable, and that's why you're going to continue to see a ramp up in, in politically motivated arrests. Senator Marco Rubio is one of a handful of Republicans vowing to block any ambassador nominee unless the Cuban government strengthens its human rights record. Secretary of State John Kerry will be here for the official opening of the U.S. Embassy. Many conservatives hope he will take a stand on the need for freedom and improved rights for the Cuban people. They recall how Secretary of State George Shultz made a difference on a visit to the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. Schultz met with Jewish dissidents in Moscow, telling them, we are with you. Such a move by Kerry would truly signal a new era in U.S.-Cuban relations. Reporting in Havana, Heather Sells, CBN News. Former President Jimmy Carter is battling cancer. In a statement released Wednesday, Mr. Carter said the cancer was discovered during a recent liver surgery and it has spread to other parts of his body. He'll be rearranging his travel schedule to receive treatment. Elected in 1976, Mr. Carter is the 39th president of the United States. He is 90 years old. And still to come, we're heading to Studio 5, and today we're hearing from actress Coco Brown why she says humor saved her life. The Bible says laughter is like medicine, and we want to introduce you to a woman who is serving up a healthy dose of it. You'll recognize her from television shows like Psych and films like Ted 2. She was born Farrah Brown, but her stage name is Coco Brown, and she's sitting down with us in Studio 5. Coco Brown. Tag me in, Coach. <laughs> now this chick gonna be all up in C-Spokes. Mm -hmm. Part owner is a familiar face on television and films. It's been said that when the actress and comedian takes the stage, the world stands still. So you grew up in Newport News? Uh-huh, born and raised. How did you or when did you realize you were funny? Honestly, it was the first time I went on TV. I mean, honestly, I... You know, if you let my friends tell it when I was in high school, in elementary school, middle school, whatever, they always said I was funny, I was always quick, I was always witty. But for real, I never knew I could get paid doing this. Brown starred in the Tyler Perry film Single Moms Club, and she plays the role of Jennifer nice. in his television show, For Better or Worse. Ooh, she went Ooh. to one, two, three, four, five school. She's smart. <laughs> 
kind of expensive in here. Yeah. Yeah. You paying for this, right? No, I'm not paying for this. I ah! better not ever do it. No! You ain't gonna make me pay and get my boobs squeezed. No! Did your mom, parents, did they know no, you? No, they thought I was crazy. Really? They had just spent all that money for a degree, and I said, I'm gonna be a comic. My parents looked at me like I had two heads. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time I ever did comedy, my parents came. Uh, to a show I did in Norfolk, Virginia, and my mom walked out the club after my show, and she said, baby, who told you you was funny? <laughs> <laughs> no lie, no lies. Real curious, so do you see the world, you think, differently than, than the average Joe who, who doesn't necessarily look at things and see, see humor in them? I do find humor in things that aren't funny, that really shouldn't be funny. <laughs> you know, I really do. I mean, you know, and, and I think that's the twistedness of most stand-up comics. Because most of us, you know, our comedy comes from pain, something that has hurt us, something that is um, traumatizing or whatever. And we've learned how to laugh at it. You know, I always say I love Kevin Hart, but he doesn't have the patent on pain. You know, we've all laughed at our pain. That's how we get through being in this business. I mean, I laughed through my divorce. Most people would have probably flung themselves off of a bridge with some of the stuff I went through, but I had to laugh at it. I mean, I remember sitting in the courtroom cracking up, and the judge was like, you all right? I'm like, sir, I, Your Honor, I just got to laugh at this right now. What, look, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm going to jump across this thing and kill the man. So, <laughs> you know, so. Whoa. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to find the humor in everything. I read that many of your fans call you the truth. Why yeah. is that? Because I always say, I don't tell jokes, I tell the truth. What I put out there is literally, I give you uh, a bird's eye view into my life, into what I've been through. I don't get up there and try to tell you knock-knock jokes or very generalized, you know, when I went to the bathroom joke. No, what you're hearing is pretty much my diary, my life unfold before you. I talk about, you know, being single. I talk about finally getting married and then finding out who you married was not who you thought they were. And then becoming a single mom and raising a little boy and trying to potty train a little boy when you can't teach him how to stand up. You know, <laughs> you know I talk about things that really relate to me. Where for you is God in all that pain that you went through? Child, I talk to him so much, I think he'd get tired of hearing from me. <laughs> you know, I always say that I, I have a joke that I say in my act, you know, when I do stand up, you know, I'm not clean and I'm gonna keep it real. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and But I do talk about God a lot in my act. And people sometimes will give you that look. And I said, don't judge me. God knows my heart. He knows my mouth ain't caught up yet. <laughs> 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 you know, and, you know, for me, you know, with all that I've been through, I mean, I've been on my own literally since I was 17. I mean, I went to college and I did what my parents, you know, I came from a very traditional Southern household. You go to college, get a degree, you get married, you have some babies. You know, I went far left after I graduated. I became a stand-up comic and decided to say, you know, whatever with this degree, I'm going to be a stand-up. And, you know, I always say I put God first. I mean, this business is relentless and it is mean and it is unfair and you constantly have to convince yourself of your worth because if you let this business define you god help you before we end i want to play a little bit of game and, and just throw out some names of people that i believe you've worked with if okay. you haven't don't worry about it uh, and just get your first impressions okay. um of, of what you recall okay samuel jackson cool so cool real cool <laughs> kelsey Grammer. hilarious hilarious Yes. Neil Long. Beautiful. Beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. Terry Crews. A fool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a funny fool. <laughs> I love Terry. Whenever I see him and think of you, it's always the funeral. Oh, the funeral reunion. Yeah, yes. And, and that was his idea. Okay. Really? Yes. That was not in the script. I don't know where he found it, but he bought it on set and was like, we're just like, and that's what, you know, Tyler would do. He'll let stuff just fly and, you know, you look like, you know, improv. You're like, okay, that's not in the script, but I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with okay. it. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tyler Perry. Gosh. Brilliant. Brilliant. And last, Oprah Winfrey. The queen. <laughs> <laughs> the queen. Yes, the queen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Up next, see why fasting is good for your spirit and your health.
Once again, scientists are discovering the health benefits of Bible practices. We've already told you, doctors say forgiveness, resting, and letting go of worry are good for your body. Well, now you can add fasting to that list. Lori Johnson explains. It appears fasting dramatically strengthens our immune system. Researchers at the University of Southern California studied humans and mice who went without food for two to four days at a time for six months. The fasting triggered their bodies to get rid of old inefficient cells and regenerate new healthy ones. This means fasting could be a key to aging well because as we get older, our immune system weakens, making us more vulnerable to disease. Fasting could prove especially beneficial to people going through chemotherapy or who suffer from autoimmune disorders. Fasting reduces the enzyme PKA, clearing the way for stem cells to renew, and lowers levels of the IGF-1 growth hormone, which is linked to cancer. One of the study authors compared it to lightening a plane of excess baggage, saying when you starve, the system tries to save energy, and one of the things it can do to save energy is to recycle a lot of the immune cells that are not needed, especially those that may be damaged. So what's good for our spiritual health also appears to be good for our physical health. Lori Johnson, CBN News. These things come with prayer and fasting. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, it is now time for your Thursday thankful. I'm reminded of something my now 70, 97-year-old grandmother, Beatrice Graham, once told me when I was a kid. And I told her, God didn't answer my prayer because I didn't get something I thought I wanted. She said, God always answers your prayers, but sometimes the answer is no or wait. So today, thank you, God, for denying or delaying some of my petitions. And I say that because looking back, it was the wrong thing or something I simply wasn't ready for when I was asking him to give it to me. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear from you. You can take the time to tell us what you think of the stories you've seen here today on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. It is Thursday. Make it a thankful one.